Rob, if we can, let's um, talk about Discovery Bible Study. A couple of weeks ago, you and I were in Austin with uh, Exponential Ventures. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I was trying to press somebody on uh, DBS, Discovery Bible Study. And uh, um, you leaned over to me and talked to me about how they'd been going well uh, there with you guys. So tell us uh, just, uh, again, for our audience, what is Discovery Bible Study? How are you using them as a disciple-making tool? And uh, tell us how it's going. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. Well, Discovery Bible Study is a simple form of Bible engagement that has a multiplicative disciple-making DNA baked into it. And so um, really quick overview. You read, you go right to the scripture. There is no external curriculum. Um, the, the Holy Spirit and the community is the teacher. So you don't have like a professional teacher. It's not lecture-based, it's discovery-based. Um, and then it's also obedience-based. So you're working through this discovery process in this passage to discover who, who God is and then what it would mean to follow and obey. And then you write an I will statement, which is a simple statement of um, whatever the Holy Spirit highlighted, how you live into it. And yeah. then also who you'll share it with. So basically you read the passage a couple of times. You have somebody retell it in their own words. And then you ask a simple set of questions. What does this tell us about the character and nature of God? What does it tell us about kind of the, um, people in general, like our character, our nature, what is it saying to me specifically? And then what am I going to do about it? And then you write that will statement, you share that. Um, typically when you meet the next time, that's what you start with. How did it go with the, I will statements. What and you have words? people literally write it down. You know, what's interesting, brother, like in our disciples made app, yeah. it's all digital. So when you put it in there, Everybody in my triad in my 12 sees my will statement. So, okay, built so in that's, if, if I want to look at that app and I'm listening in, that's disciples made. Yep. Disciples And uh, so it's basically, it's an app where you can practice these spiritual habits in community online and it provides support and accountability. So I'm reading a passage of scripture. I write my, I will statement. Let's say I'm in Ephesians. And it's like, oh, I exasperated my daughter. I know I did. And I need to ask her forgiveness. My three guys are going to see that. And they're going to pray for me. And they're going to ask me, how did it go? That's you so know? good. Yeah. So, um, so Discovery Bible Study, we, we have these five phases of training I mentioned. First one is extraordinary prayer and fasting. Phase two is live as a missionary. Phase three is plant the gospel. Phase four is microchurch emerges. Phase five is multiplication. So in plant the gospel, we basically teach people the gospel fluency skills we were just talking about, and then also how to lead and multiply discovery Bible studies. So typically this is very common in the underground. This is how almost all of our micro churches have emerged. You get a missionary um, pair or a team and they start in prayer and fasting. They're praying for their context. They start living as a missionary, um, simple incarnational rhythms. And depending on the context, sometimes it goes quick, sometimes it goes slow. They start having spiritual conversations. And we typically say to people, hey, once you've had like two spiritual conversations, invite them to do a discovery Bible study because they're giving you a green light, you know? So yeah. basically what our missionaries will do is we'll say, um, hey, would you like to just look directly at what Jesus had to say? I'm not going to preach at you. We're not going to watch some weird video. <laughs> like we're going to actually read the words of Jesus for ourselves have a conversation to discover what it would mean to follow him. Um, and then they meet for a discovery Bible study. And what happens is most of the time, not always, but more often than not, people are like, can we keep doing this? Mm. It's like, yeah, yeah, we can. We had a couple, for example, that they, they're in Gardner and kind of a middle, upper middle class neighborhood. It, they were in phase one and phase two for two years in their neighborhood. Mm. like praying, fasting, trying to live as a missionary, no spiritual conversations. Mike and, and Kristen are their name, Christine actually. And Mike said one time he tried to like crowbar Jesus into something and his neighbors were like, Whoa, whoa back up the train, bro. You know, but you know, they're, she likes to read. So she started a book club. He's into mixed martial arts. So, so are some of the other guys they are watching the fights together, you know, barbecuing and all that stuff. 
Well, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago, um, in one week, they had like powerful spiritual conversations with two different sets of neighbors. Both of them, they invited to do a discovery Bible study and they both said, yes, mm. you know, and he said, you know, that first discovery Bible study with one of those couples, um, they actually did the Lord's prayer, which was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and they had an amazing catalytic conversation. And he said he forgot to ask them at the end of the time if they wanted to meet again next week. And he was like, oh, man, I forgot. And then he was nervous. He's like, I don't know if like they kind of pushed back before when I pushed too hard. Maybe I shouldn't say. And he said, you know, a few days later, his buddy texted him and he's like, man, I've been telling everybody about that. He called it the Zen Bible <laughs> prayer time. He's like, I felt so much peace after we did that thing. And then. I just, and he was like, I've been telling everyone, God wants a relationship with you, not religion, like from one discovery Bible study, you know? And he's like, can we meet again? So they started meeting weekly. And what happens is through that discovery Bible study, new disciples emerge. Like people yeah. start actually engaging the Bible. They start obeying Jesus. They're in community. And what we've seen happen over and over again is a micro church, like the discovery Bible study becomes a womb for a new micro church. Wow. And we've seen it work in, cell blocks and in suburban neighborhoods, both like we've, since we've started, we're like two years, three months old, the Kansas city underground, more than yeah. 150 discovery Bible studies have been started. Really? Yeah. And it, and most of that is what's led to all of our baptisms and all of our micro churches. So in our context it has been very effective, but what I find is there's a lot of church leaders that take discovery Bible study and rather than use it in the harvest where we're using it, yes. they're trying to use it in the church world. Yes. And it doesn't work. Yes. And it doesn't really lead to transformation multiplication because it wasn't designed for that setting. That's good. Will you uh, explain what you mean by that? Like um, how it works with non-believers or people trying to figure out what they believe. So the harvest field is... Uh, I guess you've already said it. I'm, I'm about to ask you. Well, that. it's back to what you started about. There's disciple making movements the goal of those penetrate lostness uh it's to see new disciples four generations deep in multiple strands by god's grace new churches will emerge out of that movements of disciple making um you still have the same goals you want it to be viral multiplicative four generations multiple strands um but it's a slower build yes you're starting with the church in a christendom and christian subculture yes it's like jesus with his 12 good religious boys yes like he's got to deconstruct their image of god their understanding of the scriptures what the mission of god is how to interact with the other like they it took three years and even then you and i both know like there's their theological furniture was still all jacked up it wasn't yeah. like yeah. arranged correctly you know um and so when you're working with the church you're working with people that um, there's a lot of unlearning that needs to be done. And that's why um, we have kind of this continuum of tools and we have what we call informal tools that you use in the harvest with the lost things like the blessed rhythms, discovery Bible study. Um, but then in the church world uh, we have more formal tools. So for example, we've got, um, an experience that's called followers made and it's designed to take a believer and help them become a disciple maker. Mm. And it's, it takes six months of doing intentional deconstruction and reconstruction. So what I'm trying to say is if you haven't done that kind of deconstruction work and just throw discovery Baba study at Christians in a Christian subculture, um, they're so used to um, lecture based. Yes. They're so used to like content-based, not obedience-based kind of stuff that it, if you haven't done the deconstructing work, it sort of just bounces off of them. Yeah. Cause it's like, well, this is trite. Like, where's the, where's the meat? Where's the teaching? And then like, they don't like the, I will statement. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like you're trying to tell, wait a second. <laughs> They're so used to just like getting content and not having to do anything with it. So they don't actually write an I will statement, or if they do, they don't like do anything with it. And then you say, share it. And they're kind of like, mm. so what happens is they don't actually do a discovery Bible study. They do some weird half breed of it. 
And then three weeks later, they're like, Hey, can we go back to the video curriculum? Yeah. (laughs) That's boy. I'm the way you describe that is so good, Rob. Well, I've experienced both ways, man. You know, I've been made a lot of mistakes. So a lot of it is just sharing out of like, well, I tried that and it didn't work. Why did this not work? Yeah. (laughs) 